everybody. Welcome to another episode of You Are A Lot, an ADHD podcast. It's me, your host, Jen Kirkman. So today I wanted to talk about the weird things that you do that aren't weird to you. They're definitely maybe weird to other people. Maybe they are weird to you, but they're kind of unexplained. And then after you got your ADHD diagnosis, you found out that this thing you've always experienced or done or felt is actually ADHD. I have that all of the time. I've had my diagnosis for many years. I do ADHD coaching. I'm in therapy. I read every single thing about ADHD that I can get my hands on. And I swear like once a week or something, there's another little thing that I realize, oh yeah, that is kind of weird. Not everyone does this, but I just thought, I didn't think I was unique, like the only person on earth doing whatever thing, but I didn't think it was ADHD. And now I just realize it's probably ADHD because again, ADHD is a neurodevelopmental, you could call it disorder. Some people call it condition. I like to call it condition of our executive functions and the executive functions of our brain literally run everything in our lives. So why wouldn't something that you're doing that's a little bit strange <laughs> be part of your ADHD? Now, again, these little things that I'm going to be talking about, they're usually not something that you will find out if you get your diagnosis at a psychiatrist's office or even in an online quiz or something. But if you search around on TikTok or Instagram or something like that, you'll find your people. And of course, over on my Patreon, you will find your people who talk about, you know, do you do this? Well, I just found out it's an ADHD thing. And I, I find it uh, so delightful. So here's, uh, for me, I'm just, this episode is about my weird things that I have uh, realized are things I've done my whole life because I have ADHD. And again, I'm not uh, stopping doing these things. These aren't things that like I needed to learn to correct. They're, they're not hurting me in any way. Um, but now I just sort of know. And if I want to make changes or try to be more aware, I I totally have that opportunity and I'll I'll talk about it with some of the ones. But anyway, uh, so one of the things that I had no idea was because I was an adhd -er, is that I sit weird. I can't sit properly in chairs and I prefer to sit on the floor. So, you know, if, if there's ever, uh, you know, I have a writing job, I, I write on, on a TV show. And if we're ever gathering in somebody's office and there's not enough seating, I will always opt to sit on the floor and people will say, oh, no, 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 get, oh, no, you have such a nice outfit on. Don't sit on the floor or you're a woman. No one says that. But, um, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not trying to be a martyr or get attention or be weird. I prefer the floor. I love sitting on the floor. I've noticed my dad does this and I have diagnosed my entire family with ADHD because it is hereditary and it doesn't mean that your parents necessarily do have it if you do, but I can see look, as I look back on everybody's life, including my own, oh my God, everyone's had ADHD the whole time. But my dad loves to lay on the floor when he's watching TV. There's perfectly good couches available and seats. When I'm at home, I tend to, I, I guess, sit on the couch if I'm, if I'm watching TV, but it would not be weird to me to instead decide I'm just going to sit on the, on the rug. And I don't, you know, I'm not sitting on a hard floor. I have a very soft, plush rug, and we're going to get to that in a minute in this episode. But anyway, I don't mind sitting on the floor. Now, when I sit in a chair... I sit all kinds of ways and I could sit in a chair sort of like hunched on my feet. You know what I mean? As though I'm um, 
crouching, I guess is the word, I can sit with not my legs crossed exactly, but one leg over the other in kind of a, a, a triangle shape. I can sit cross-legged. I can sit with my legs widespread apart. I could even sit with one leg up on my desk if I'm at work. I sit all kinds of ways. I, I often sat on a yoga ball and people would say, oh, are you doing that for your abs? And this is so good. For, I'm like, I, no, I, I listen. I just, I just don't want to sit in a chair the normal way. And I never knew that was an ADHD thing. And you would think that that might be obvious because it might point to, hello, you might have some hyperactivity, you might be fidgeting, you might be stimming as they call it, which is when we try to stimulate ourselves in any way that we can because we need that dopamine. So examples of stimming could be changing your position in your chair, you know, playing with a fidget spinner, doing something like this. You can't see what I'm doing, but maybe you can hear it. You know, wrapping your fingers on the counter, on the table, on the desk, whatever. But I always thought weird. And there's this chair that I totally want that allows you to sit in a million different positions. And it oh, they make it look so easy. They make it look so easy. I mean, there's a million chairs like this, but the brand that I keep seeing that's being targeted to me from all of my ADHD meme searching on Instagram and TikTok is Piper Song. And it's a meditation chair, an ADHD chair. It's listed a million different ways, but it, I mean, it looks fantastic. It's on wheels. It, it kind of moves in all different directions. There's almost two levels of seats. So you could sit on it in that meditative way where, you know, your knees are behind you. I mean, there's so many different ways to sit on this chair. But I keep thinking, well, I want this chair so badly. You know, they have a, in the ad, they've got this woman sitting five, 10, 10, 12 different ways in the chair. Do you feel bored sitting in a fixed position and always try to squeeze your legs into the limited space of those conventional office chairs? Are you a cross-legged fidgety sitter, a yoga lover, or a meditation fanatic? You know, they, you can squat in this, you can switch positions easily, blah, blah, blah. But it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, but then I'd have to buy the chair, open up the box, figure out how to put the chair together because I... Well, first of all, I don't have to figure it out because I'm never going to because, again, another ADHD thing that I've realized is I won't read directions. I know they're there. I know they could help me. I might even understand them, but I, do, I can't. Like, I can't. And, and there's a, you know, most of the things that I have that are ADHD that do impact my life or have impacted my life in a negative way, I have worked on. I say I'm in ADHD recovery and I am actively changing so that I can make the people who interact with me have a great life as well. So my emotional regulation is on point. My time management is, is pretty much on point. I am really doing the work. But there are a few things where I think, you know what? Um, I'm not going to become a task rabbit anytime soon as a job. So I'm not going to read directions of how to do it. It's just, it's, I got to let that one go. There's always someone, God bless everyone with different brains than me, who love to read directions and put things together. I might find, I've got friends who like to do that stuff for fun. And of course, you can always, if you have the means, pay people to put things together for you. So I just know me, if I get one of these chairs, I will have to immediately have someone assemble it for me. But it is the thing that's kept me from getting it, which is I just don't even want to deal with the box coming. 